You uh, may recall the retired vaudevillian who had been in the original Gus Edwards Postal Telegraph Boys act with Groucho back in the good old days. When he appeared on the show, of course, this led to some reminiscing uh, with this result. Let's look at it, shall we? But you know, I didn't sing that song, Dave. I know you didn't. You know, I sang Somebody's Sweetheart. <laughs> Do you know that? Yeah, I, sure, I remember it. Did you sing it? Yeah, well, I can't. I'll sing it as best I can. Uh, Somebody... A place I have to tell you about this. Uh, <laughs> there was some big catastrophe took place in the United States. I don't remember what it was exactly, but we gave a benefit, and it was at the Metropolitan Opera House in New York, because at that time, that was the biggest theater. And I walked out on the stage, and there were 60 musicians sitting out front, dressed in evening clothes. I'd never seen anybody dressed in evening clothes, except my father when he got married. But here were all... <laughs> Here were these 60 men, and I was, I was really, I was stiff with fright, and, but uh, I bellowed this song out. I was young enough to have courage in those days. Anyhow, this is the way the chorus went. Of course, you must remember that I could sing then. Somebody, sweetheart, I want to be. Somebody's heart beating all for me somebody's two arms around me when i feel blue somebody's sweetheart and that means you that was it and finally probably our all-time favorite this is a sequence that has never before seen the light of day. And if we want to stay on the air, I guess it never will. It features a rather remarkable woman who runs a boarding house in Hollywood. And I can't wait to see this one myself. A boarding house keeper must have many curious experiences, Mrs. Blainer. Do you have any hot ones you could tell us about? Well, the, the worst one was uh, when I first got married, uh, I thought I'd surprise my husband. So I took him... Uh... What'd you do, get him some steak from a cow? <laughs> I would have galvanized them. No, I decided I would uh, bake him some rolls. So I put two yeast cakes in, and I didn't get In more. your husband? No. <laughs> in the rolls. Oh. And then I put three more in. I still couldn't get no rice out of them. So what is... perfectly innocent audience. <laughs> well, go on with the story, huh? We're hell-bent anyhow. Let's have it. You know, you're not supposed to be funnier than I am, huh? Let me get an occasional chuckle here. <laughs> well, you went to the store. Then I got five more yeast cakes. <laughs> And still, I couldn't get no rise out of it. <laughs> he, must, he must have been around Mount Whitney by this time. <laughs> well, did he have a sail back again? <laughs> So in disgust, I got so disgusted, I went and buried it in the backyard. <laughs> Isn't that against the law? <laughs> well, I even planted the geranium on top of it. <laughs> well, then, that's a very interesting story, Mrs. Bynum. Well, I didn't finish it. You finished your husband. I don't know. You hear the last of it. Well, what's happening? So about three days later, the sun was shining and it was hot. So 
So he come running in the house and he said... He was still alive? <laughs> he didn't eat it yet. Oh. So he come running in the house and he said, Ann, come look and see what's coming out of our house, out of the ground. <laughs> so I, uh, this uh, yeast had risen about a foot and a half and right on top was a geranium. <laughs> what I did. Um, is, he, is he still alive? Well, I think so. Well, you better check when you get home tonight. Huh? But he didn't eat the rolls, though. Oh, he did? No. Is there anything else uh, funny happen to you? Well, <laughs> right no. yeah. That we could possibly use on the show? <laughs> Not my fault, huh? <laughs> Before you go, I just want to tell you to drop in and see me anytime. And when you do, tell me DeSoto sent you. <laughs>